Hey, it's episode 7, and yeah, this one is boring, but necessary. It's really worth knowing about, it's just not as exciting as firing a phaser or creating fire. But if you stay to the end, then yeah, I got nothing. Hard work is its own reward, right? We're talking about pre-composing or pre-comping today, which I've probably just done a huge disservice to. Pre-comping doesn't mean pre-rendering. It's where I can stack compositions inside each other so that I can either apply VFX to the whole setup or just so that I can use the same animation more than once. You can already add one composition to another, like here I have a sphere composition and I've added a logo inside it and now I can hang it from the Christmas tree. But that means I have had to plan out how I was going to do that. What if I just needed to create a composition as I was working? Well that's where pre-comps come in. Here's my composition and I'm going to make a heads up display. Nothing as advanced as Iron Man, but something for you to get an idea. So let's create a solid, which is layer, new, solid. I'm going for a white solid and make it comp sized. Now, even though it's a heads up display, I'm going to treat it like a computer desktop and create windows for my information. Clicking and holding onto the mask tool in the toolbar, I'm going to switch to the rounded rectangle mask. And now I'm going to draw a window shape, a rectangle. Now in the timeline, I'm going to select the mask and then go to Edit Duplicate to make a copy. And expand mask options and set Mask 2 to Subtract. And then shrink its expansion. That gives us an outline shape. Now switch the mask tool to Rectangle and draw a new rectangle at the top of our window. Incidentally, if you start drawing your mask and a shape layer appears, it's because you haven't got the layer selected. Just delete the shape layer and select your white solid. Shape layers are a really handy shortcut instead of using solids, and they have a lot of extra features. But I'm not going to use them here, for the same reason you're told where the brake in a car is before you're allowed to drive it. Contrary to appearances, I've planned these videos to introduce information to you in what I feel is the best order. But feel free to jump ahead though. With Mask 3 drawn, expand its properties in the timeline and fade down its opacity. I want to create a menu bar look. Now all windows have a close button, so let's create a close symbol. I could just use an X, but this is more even. You can find it in Character Map. Click on the text tool and paste in the close symbol. So we haven't covered type before. There's a separate video about that. So for now, I'll just say the text tool lets you add text to a new layer directly into the timeline and then it behaves like any other layer. So I'll zoom in using my mouse wheel and drag it into position. And back on the white solid, I'll make another square for the close button using a mask. Set it to subtract and fade it too. Cool, the 1990s gold, they think I've nailed the look. Quick question, how come Windows and Mac OS have never made their interfaces look like Jarvis or any movie terminal? Clearly it's what Hollywood is telling us is cool. So how come UX designers don't make windows look like Iron Man? Anyway, if I now drop in a landscape picture and scale it up to fill the screen, I can spot a problem. My window is transparent. Anything I put there will be hard to read potentially because of the background. So let's add a new solid. Black this time. And now if I select the white solid layer and tap M, all four masks are shown. I'm going to select mask one and hold control and tap C, or I could just go to edit copy. Switch to the black solid and choose edit paste or control and V. It's copied the mask from the white solid to the black solid. If the layers weren't the same dimensions or scale differently, this wouldn't have worked, but it saves me trying to guess or match the correct size. The black is a little too black, so hit T to show the layer's transparency and adjust it until you're happy. Cool. So now I have a window look, albeit a really basic one. And if I drag it, oh yeah, it's only dragged one layer. Oh, and the parent tutorial is until next week. Okay, Control and Z to undo. Let's select our three window layers, text layer, the white and the black solids. I do that by selecting the first layer, holding the shift key and selecting the last one I want. Now, right click on the layers and choose Precompose. 
This pop-up lets me name the new composition and there's an option greyed out. That's because we have multiple layers selected. I'll show you the other option in a couple of minutes. I'm going to ignore the adjust composition duration to the time span of selected layers checkbox. This is a relatively new feature and deserves its own tutorial. By all accounts it's pretty clever but truth be told I've not explored it fully yet. I'll also ignore the open a new composition option for now and click OK. All three layers disappear and are replaced by this composition as a layer. And being a layer, I can now move it around. I can select it and duplicate it. I can scale it up and down. All sorts of fun. And I can open this comp from my timeline just by double clicking. Now, it's off to one side, which was fine to begin with, but it would be better to center it. I could go back to my hood comp and adjust the anchor point like this. I select the layer and either expand it or tap the A key to show the anchor point coordinates. I can then drag these backwards and forwards to realign the layer around its anchor point. Or I could use the pan behind tool and drag the anchor point around instead. But I'm not going to do either of those. Instead I'll go back into the window comp and select all three layers like before and drag them to the centre of the screen. Except I don't know where the centre of the screen is exactly. I can turn that on using the Grid and Guides menu. Now I've made a really minor change to the Windows Comp and if I switch back to the HUD Comp, can you see what's happened? The change has been reflected in this Comp too. No rendering, no exporting, just a building up of resources. Let's say we want to add a better background to the window. Let's go back into the Comp and search for a ramp to add a gradient ramp. and we'll add it to the black solid. And there we go, just a subtle extra bit of shading. Back in my hood comp, I've got two copies of the window comp and I'll use the tint effect to make one red and one blue. Do you see how it's tinting everything in the window but maintaining the transparencies? Delete the top window for now and let's animate the window opening. Again, there are several ways to do this but the easiest for now is to add a linear wipe. So back in the Windows Comp, select the white solid and go to Effect, Transition, Linear Wipe. Set the direction to zero. Set a keyframe for 100% on the first frame. Move forward half a second. You can either do that by the current time indicator or tap page down on your keyboard. And set the keyframe to 0%. Now if I turn off the masks using the toggle mask option, you can see the white layer wipe on. Tap U to expose the keyframes in the timeline. And at the second keyframe, let's select the text layer and using the left square bracket, trim the text to only appear it from this point. Now for the black solid, let's have it fade up after the outline has appeared. Select it and tap T on the keyboard. Set a keyframe for the opacity to 0%. Move forward a few frames and set the opacity back to about 30%. Back in our HUD comp, tapping 0 on the keyboard's keypad will show us what we've got. Oh, now one quick thing. If I move the current time indicator to about 5 seconds in and then double click on the Windows Comp, look what happens. See the time is synchronised up across both comps. If I move the time back to earlier and then switch back to the HUD Comp, the time synchronisation stays. Now that I've added an animation, let's duplicate the Windows Comp and move it later in the timeline and we'll make it blue again. Cool. We've now got two animations for the price of one, or three, or four. Now the time sync will get a little screwy. Another use now, let's add a new solid. Make sure it's at the start of the timeline and then go to Effect, Generate, Grid. 
make the border a little thicker and then go to Effect, Perspective, CC Sphere. So imagine I'm planning to create a company logo or something using this sphere. I might want to add animations and have it appear in both the background and on each window. So let's right click on the layer and choose Precompose. Now I have the first option available. I could leave all the effects on the comp layer in the hood comp. I'll show you an example in a second of why you might do that. But for now, I'll just pre-compose this layer with all attributes. And now I can scale up the comp, I can drag it beneath windows, I can fade it out. I can then double click on a window comp and scale it down and make it into an icon. And then if the company changes its logo, I only have to go back to the sphere comp and turn off the original layer and add a new one. Similarly, for the background, I've scaled up my image to fill the screen. But suppose I want the background to change out. If I right click on the landscape layer and pre-compose, and this time choose leave all attributes, I can swap images in or change them completely, all the while knowing that the choices I've made to the original, in this case the scaling, will apply to any other images. Which brings me to the last example, and probably the one you'll use the most. I've created a text layer, and I've pre-comped it. And then I've duplicated the comp layer a bunch of times, offset each one's position, and change the colour using tint. I've also added a reflection by changing the Y scale of one layer to minus 100%. Now, what happens if my parents see this and disapprove of the grammatical choice of starting rather than starting? Hey, just because I'm in my 40s doesn't mean my grammar still isn't getting picked up on. Because I've pre-comped my text, all I have to do is double click on any of the layers, edit the text, and everything changes. Ah, now the G screws everything up. Maybe I'll just not let my parents see this tutorial series. They've always preferred Final Cut Pro anyway. Okay, that's it for this episode. Hopefully you weren't bored after all. There's loads of After Effects HUD tutorials out there that can help you get a much better look than what we've got today, but at least you now have the basics of pre-comping to help you get started. Next time we'll be looking at Null Objects and Parenting, which is moving multiple layers by changing the settings on a single layer. I know, exciting.